Welcome back, folks. I'm Jay Cullenbogen, and today we're going to be talking about Jonah Jackson. I gave you an initial video the moment he was signed, what I felt he was bringing to the table. Uh, I did some research, as you guys probably are aware. Um, I didn't do all my research because I wasn't even aware he was going to actually get signed. Uh, when I say that, I mean, I thought the Lions would want to bring him back. You don't normally see a guy with those movement skills and everything that he has uh, to his you know, disposal. You don't normally see a guy like that just moved on from, especially when you have an older free agent in Graham Glasgow who you end up signing over him. So before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. Appreciate you guys that are doing that. I put content out on Instagram and TikTok as well uh, as Twitter. So um, really appreciate that, but let's dive into it. So Jonah Jackson, who is this? Like, what? Wh who? what is he? Like, what does he mean for the Rams? Well, I'm going to explain all of that. First off, you need to know, if you haven't already known, the contract Three years, $51 million with $34 million guaranteed. We don't have the actual numbers yet as far as how much this is going to cost on the 2024 season salary cap. Um, his cap kit could be high. It could be low. Depends. Did they backload the deal? Did they front load the deal? I doubt they front loaded it, but um, we will find out. But Jonah Jackson, he's played 3,530 snaps at left guard and he has started all the games he's been in, which have been 57 games since he was drafted in 2020. He has a 93.2 uh, pass block percentage, uh, win rate percentage, excuse me, in 2023, which is extremely good. Very, very good. Um, his 2023 numbers, he had 12 games played because of injuries. He was dealing with all sorts of stuff this past year with wrist and ankle and a concussion I believe um, just a lot of different things um, so 12 games 798 snaps two sacks allowed 24 pressures and a 96.8 efficiency rating with five penalties one thing I wanted to point out however is after he came back from injury in week 13 on if you take away the Dallas game he was actually second in the entire league according to PFF in pass block grade for guards so that's saying something there it shows that he bounced back in a big way you know from kind of the rough going this season having a hard time staying healthy and another thing is and with him, that needs to be said is that he's a really good run blocker this past year. For whatever reason, he wasn't the best. Uh, he did struggle, especially in zone blocking. I think the Rams went back. They watched the tape. They probably already liked this guy coming out of Ohio State. Uh, originally, Rutgers transferred to Ohio State. <clears throat> so they probably liked this guy anyway. But what I think happened is that the Rams went through that Rams and Lions tape and they saw Jonah Jackson and they had really highlighted him as somebody that was going to fit into their new look offensive line. Okay. And I think they've made the right choice in that regard. I think he fits their gap scheme. Well, um, I'm going to get into further, but that's 2023. 2022, he played in 13 games. He had 858 snaps, zero sacks allowed, 26 pressures, 97.2 efficiency rate, and four penalties. So immediately what you'll notice is that he played one more game. He had more snaps because of it. He gave up fewer sacks, which was zero. He gave up two more pressures despite playing one more game. And he had a, he had a career best. Uh, efficiency rate at 97.2 and a career best penalty rate at four. So um, that's a good thing. So he played 16 games um, back to back seasons before 2022. And in 2021, 16 games, 1037 snaps, four sacks allowed 35 pressures, 96.8 efficiency rating and eight penalties. 2020, 16 games, 1,006 snaps as a rookie, five sacks allowed, 35 pressures, 96.7 efficiency rating, and five penalties. So Jackson is 
a model of consistency. His rating never dropped below 96.7. It was always at least above that. That or above it. It was never below it. That's really good. Um, His penalties, he had the one year he had eight penalties. Ironically, that was the year um, he had the most penalties, but that was the year he was actually a pro bowler. Um, He has two seasons in which he's had 1,000 snaps. He has, you know, no seasons where he's given up more than five sacks. He has now back-to-back seasons in which he's been in the 20s in pressures. I think what we're seeing with Jonah Jackson, who's 27 years old, a young 27 at that, we are seeing a guy who is going to get better, I think, with the coaching staff that the Rams have. It's no knock against the Lions, but I think first off, the scheme fit. Okay. I think he's going to be a better fit for this blocking scheme. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is I I think he is going to be huge working with Ryan Wendell and potentially, um, Mike Munchak. So we'll see what ends up happening there. I don't know if he's going to be a consultant or part of the coaching staff at all. Um, but if he is, I mean, that dude is a legend for offensive line. So worth keeping an eye on. Also worth mentioning here, and I mentioned this in the, in the video initially, I'm mentioning it again, Brandon Thorne, okay? This guy, when he talks, it's like gospel, okay? Anytime he says something about offensive line, you listen. This guy is a guru. He has his own sub stack where he breaks down offensive linemen. So Jonah Jackson, he went through all of the free agents and graded them all out. Um, and made a ranking system, you know, for offensive line free agents. Jonah Jackson came in first among interior line. Okay, that's ahead of Kevin Dotson. That's ahead of Michael and Wenyu. That's ahead of Robert Hunt. He was number one. That was kind of funny. 27 years old. So Jackson was dealt, and this is, you know, right from his paragraph here, Jackson dealt with a slew of injuries last season to his wrist, ankle, and knee that kept him out of five games and caused his play to fluctuate more than normal. When Jackson was healthy over the last three seasons, no other available guard matched his explosiveness, power, and movement skills. With 57 career starts over his first four seasons, a Pro Bowl under his belt, and impact ability as a run and pass protector, he should be the most coveted guard this free agency period. Well, guess what? He definitely was not, but the Rams went out and got him for $17 million, which is a little bit more than what they're paying Kevin Dotson per year, and guess what? That ended up being a bargain because if what he is saying is true, and I think Jonah Jackson is a very good player, so if what Brandon Thorne is saying is true, the Rams not only got a good deal, they got a good player, they stole him on the market. They got a great deal. If you look at it, if that's the case, and he's that much better than guys like Robert Hunt and Michael and Wenyu, Landon Dickerson, Robert Hunt, and Michael and Wenyu all got deals in the twenties per year. So, very good looking deal. I know guards were getting paid this time around. I'd say finally they matter too. But Jonah Jackson seems like the Rams knew what they were doing, and we always hear. Oh, trust Sean McVay and trust Les Snead. They know what they're doing. And then those same people will say, I don't know what Sean McVay and Les Snead are doing. It's like, just trust the process. I thought this was interesting from section 344 Lions on Twitter. There's some confusion about Jonah Jackson's injuries. Missed three games total in his first three years. Didn't miss a game his first two it's a brutal position played 12 games last year Decker and rag now over the same time period have missed significantly more time than Jonah I think this is going to be a very mixed bag when you look at the Lions fans reactions but I do think a lot of the Lions fans are going to miss Jonah Jackson and they're not a huge fan of moving on from him and I wouldn't be either As you guys know, similar position, a little bit older, but similar position, Kevin Dotson, same draft class. Kevin Dotson is somebody that I was going to be very upset if they let go, okay? Dotson wasn't just a one-year wonder, and this is what I tried to explain to people. 
the Steelers had a change in blocking schemes this upcoming year. So Kevin Dotson fell out of favor of their plans. Doesn't mean Kevin Dotson wasn't good on the Steelers. He shined. However, in pass pro, he was never as good as he was this year for the Rams. So you look at Jonah Jackson and you're like, he played well on the Lions. He's a former pro bowler. Could he be better on the Rams? Yeah, he could. Absolutely. So I like especially the fact that he has familiarity with Stafford. Might not be a huge deal since he's not a center, although he played center a little bit. I think he has over 100 snaps at center in the NFL. Um, But it's still a nice little nugget there. I do think looking at the tape, I'm sure they went through that Rams Lions tape and they, they, uh, you know, saw Jonah Jackson and he stood out to them. And I think he makes a lot of sense for their blocking scheme. So with that said, what happens now? What does it mean for the interior offensive line? We've already talked about it probably at nauseum at this point. Steve Avila is going to be the center. Okay. Which I'm very happy about. Jackson, the left guard, is 311 pounds. Steve Avila, 332. And Kevin Dotson, 321. You might not know this, but the Rams' three maulers in the interior are a combined 964 pounds of force. Now, remember that anytime they're using them in the run game, that's what defenses are looking up against. It's not that teams do don't normally go this route. It's not like the Rams are reinventing the wheel. We saw the Saints with Drew Brees beef up the front. We saw the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes beef up the front with Tooney and Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith. This is not unheard of. But with that said, this is a top five interior offensive line and potentially the best offensive line interior offense line in the National Football League. The reason I say that is because I just went through all 32 NFL teams, and this is the Jonah Jackson effect. One of the best interior offensive lines in football, I could only find four teams you could even make a genuine argument for over the Rams. And these four teams, their trios are Patriots left guard Cole Strange, center David Andrews, and right guard Michael and Wenyu. That's really good. Cole Strange is underrated. I think this is an, this has an argument to be being better than the Rams. Browns, Joel Batonio, Ethan Pochich, and Wyatt Teller. Teller and Batonio are monsters, and Pochich is all right. The Browns have a really good case to be better than the Rams, so they're there as well. The Chiefs, I already mentioned. I mentioned Tooney. I mentioned Creed Humphrey, and I mentioned Trey Smith. So they're number three. And then, believe it or not, the new-look Panthers. Their interior, they added a guy that I'm very high on, Damian Lewis, who I mentioned multiple times throughout this process. Austin Corbett, the former Ram, if he stays healthy, it looks like he's playing center now and Robert Hunt, the right guard. That's it. That's the end of the list. So Rams have a top five interior offensive line. The question is, are they five, four, three, two, or one? I don't know. And is that a question that we really need to answer? Not really, because the bottom line is, if the Rams offensive line in the interior is top five, then they did their job, okay? This is why I said over and over again, I felt like... I didn't want the Rams to be too comfortable just using Coleman Shelton at center. And when Coleman Shelton opted out, it put the Rams in a situation where they saw themselves potentially falling into the trap with Von Miller again. And they were not going to allow themselves to do that. Jordan Rodrigue even alluded to that idea, saying that the Rams were not willing to hang around and wait for Coleman Shelton's market. They just decided we're going to go out, we're going to get players that we want, And then because we did our homework in the draft when we selected Steve Avila in the second round at TCU last year and realized that he has versatility, that was a big reason why we, you know, selected him. Now he can play center. There you go. You check two guys right off the box right then and there. So this, in my opinion, is a very good signing. 
that is probably going to be better than I am even giving it credit for. And furthermore, I'm almost more excited for the fact that it pushes Steve Avila to his natural position. To have a guy at 332 pounds at center, this team is going to be a pain in the ass to go up against. Defense alignment are not going to want to play against the Rams. And by the way, constantly, what have we seen? I think a good example of this is the Giants game. I think having a guy like Steve Avila at center is going to be leaps and bounds better than Coleman Shelton. I like Shelton, and if he wants to come back as a backup if the market dries out, by all means, I'm all for it. But Avila makes way too much sense with this new look Rams offensive line archetype that they're going for with the Maulers up front, big beefy up front. That's what I like. I like that because I feel like that puts Kyron Williams in a good spot. That puts the play action in a good spot. And most importantly, you have more mass up front to keep Matthew Stafford intact. So this is what I will say. Watching the Giants game, being at MetLife and seeing the different pressures that were applied on Matthew Stafford in that game. I know Matthew Stafford struggles against Wink Martindale defenses. I know that that is already out there. That is well known, but this is different because I saw a lot of different stunts that were being used and Coleman Shellen was too slow to communicate that to other guys. Okay. I think Steve Avila is going to be rock solid in that department. I'm very excited to see his maturation and his overall growth as he moves to his initial position. I think this is going to be huge. And I think moves like this are what separate people. And I would even equate it to real, you know, honestly, real life moves like this. The Rams deciding, you know what? We're not going to wait. We're going to take, we're going to go and make the first move. We're going to, you know, step out of our comfort zone. You know, we're, we're not, we're going to be comfortable being uncomfortable because guess what? This is a new thing for the Rams. They don't sign guys like Colby Parkinson and Jonah Jackson. They've never done that before during the tampering period. Now I've also never seen that many signings uh, announced during the tampering period on the first day. So maybe that's the new wave. But regardless, the Rams have embraced a change. And I think winning the Super Bowl, the way they were able to do it, and not getting too big of an ego, and I know obviously 2022 20, played into it, but not getting too big of an ego, Sean McVay, I'm talking to you, where you're not willing to change anything, your way or the highway, I'm a Super Bowl champion, you're not, I'm going to do things my way, it doesn't matter. This is the thing. Sean McVay, at a young age, early on in his coaching career, is doing things and in, in making these adjustments and this Rams philosophy is adjusting in ways that coaches who have been around for 20, 30 years never even bother to do. And you wonder why the Rams are constantly competitive. And it takes <clears throat> the literal wagon and the wheels to come right off for them to not make the playoffs. You look at 2019, the year they didn't make the playoffs. Why didn't they make the playoffs? They had a bunch of injuries on the offensive line. It was a brutal year. And of course, you know, Jared Goff wasn't 2018 Jared Goff. Then you look at 2022. What was the issue there? The offensive line wheels came right off. So 2023 hits. They're not supposed to be as good as they end up being. And now they have set themselves up with these three-year deals telling us, look, we're coming for the Lombardi trophy. And we just set ourselves up for a three-year Super Bowl window to win more Super Bowls with Matthew Stafford. So Jonah Jackson, that's what you're getting. He's a big part of this. He's going to be a huge part of the future, the immediate future. I don't know if he gets brought back after the three-year deal, but you should feel very good about this because I think looking at the Rams offensive line, they're one of the nastiest SOBs in the league. Okay. Simply put, it's just nasty up front. And we didn't even talk about Rob Havenstein, who's also nasty at right tackle. Not sure what they're doing at left. <clears throat> Alec Jackson could be there. They could sign Tyron Smith. They could draft somebody, trade up for Joe Alt. 
Olu Fashanu, Amarius Mims, J.C. Latham. I don't know. But the point I'm making here is that right now the Rams have four of five offensive linemen that are absolute terrifying for defensive lines. The Rams offense that was top 10 last year with an average center is, I'm just telling you guys, is this is the start of something massive. So be prepared. Do I like this move? I absolutely like this move. So that's all I got for you guys. Those are my thoughts on Jonah Jackson. At some point, I'd like to do a film breakdown. Um, but this is all I got for you now. So hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to subscribe. Um, be sure to comment. Be sure to like. And also be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, folks. Later. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.